Welcome to Build Your Difference, a podcast designed to help visionary people like you build distinguished brands that inspire and engage a growing audience. Hello, I'm Jim Dennison. We're glad to have you with us for the March edition of our Build Your Difference podcast. We look forward to sharing inspiring and compelling stories of Blue Artist clients with you. And I'm Desiree Moody. We'll also offer educational resources to help you build a better business and brand. Each podcast includes three segments, client news, a feature story, and a segment with one of our producers. Our theme for this month is content marketing. If you're not sure what that is, don't worry. By the end of this podcast, you'll have heard several examples of content marketing and understand why it's so important for your brand. Let's jump right into this month's client news segment with an update on author, wife, and busy mom, Nikki Ferguson. She recently published her first book, Better After Baby. What can you tell us about it, Jim? Nikki's book, Better After Baby is a must-read weight loss book to inspire mothers to live confident, comfortable, healthy, and fit lives. Better After Baby chronicles her journey that began with a 90-day fitness challenge at a gym she joined shortly after her second child was born. Her daughter was 18 months old and her son was three months old at the time. While her resistance training and cardio program began shaping and toning her body, she found that nutrition was the key to actually losing the weight. In the book, Nikki shares her inspirational story of how she lost over 45 pounds following her back-to-back pregnancies and how she successfully kept the weight off. With fad diets a thing of the past, her approach to weight loss focuses on lifestyle changes that emphasize nutrition and fitness. Nikki details her exact system, from her workouts to the easy meals she prepares for her family. The book also includes some of her recipes. Most importantly, she shares the mindset needed to finally lose the weight and keep it off for good. Nikki shared with us a little about why she wrote her book. People always ask me what I did and how I did it. From my research, I found a lot of people share their before and after, but they didn't share what they did, she said. I want to let people know that reaching your health and fitness goals isn't easy, and it doesn't happen overnight. But it also doesn't have to be unpleasant. With a little mindfulness, we can eat foods that we love in moderation and move in ways we enjoy to reach our fitness goals. Now, as a stay-at-home mother of two with a well-planned fitness and nutrition regimen in place, she finds escaping to the gym is a perfect time to step away and recharge to focus on herself and her goals. I want to inspire women, especially moms, to know it's never too late to live a healthy, fit life they love, Ferguson said. As moms, we're often the leaders of health in our homes, and it's up to us to lead by example. Better After Baby is available in paperback and as an ebook on Amazon.com and through our website, fitmomfergie.com. That's fantastic, Jim. Sharing personal stories in the form of a book is a form of content marketing, and it really does allow the reader to connect deeply with an author. Nikki's new book is a perfect example. On behalf of everyone here at Blue Artists, I'd like to congratulate Nikki Ferguson on the release of Better After Baby and on her own weight loss success. Another form of content marketing we'll discuss today is blogging. Blog articles are an excellent way to connect with your audience by writing content that's relevant to them. Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, founder of Enjoy Your Legacy and Real Estate Investors Association, NYC, recently published a blog article on the topic of joint ventures something she is very familiar with and knows is of interest to her audience. In her blog article, How to Grow Your Business with Joint Ventures, Dr. Martin writes, one of the primary reasons that entrepreneurs start their own is because they want to do things on their own. But that's not always possible or profitable. At some point, most entrepreneurs and small business owners find that it's necessary to expand their horizons in order to grow their business and increase profits. Simply stated, strategic partnerships are the path to profits, she said. Dr. Martin, an entrepreneur and seasoned real estate investor, says that one of the fundamental ways to identify a potential partnerships is through relationship building and networking. For example, Building relationships with vendors can result in many money-saving and time-saving possibilities that can lead to more profits. 
networking events are an excellent opportunity to discover potential collaborators. Dr. Martin's REIA NYC Mastermind and Training Program offers both relationship building and networking opportunities for investors and real estate professionals. Growth can come quickly with a new business, and while rapid growth is good, it can also present some challenges. The REIA Wealth Academy has many resources available to help scale a business, such as forecasting the future of a business, accounting and payroll, financial projections, building a team, and certain strategic partnerships. Partnerships don't have to be strictly for financial benefit. They can incorporate causes for organizations that fit a passion, Dr. Martin says. Rhea NYC's passion is to improve the financial capabilities of citizens in their communities. The organization recently partnered with National Financial Educators Council to develop privately labeled financial literacy curriculum that teaches money management skills. The financial literacy coursework and the organization's mission to improve financial literacy form a partnership known as the Rhea NYC Financial Literacy Project. Dr. Martin created her own law firm, the law offices of Teresa R. Martin, PC, where she has honed her skills in areas of bankruptcy and real estate. She also specializes in residential and commercial real estate transactions, credit restoration, and foreclosure defense litigation services. As an experienced real estate investor with a focus on creative acquisition strategies, she has implemented and taught strategies to others through Rhea NYC. To read the complete blog article and learn more about Dr. Martin, Enjoy Your Legacy and Rhea NYC, visit www.enjoyyourlegacy.com. Dr. Martin's blog really shows her expertise in the area of joint ventures and provides valuable information for her audience. It certainly is an excellent example of quality content marketing. Next up, I'd like to share another example of an insightful blog article written by entrepreneur Janice Deloach. Her blog article is titled, Do Small Business Development Centers and SCORE Counselors Really Help Entrepreneurs, Small Business, and Startups? From the title alone, the audience can tell that this piece will be informative and relevant. Janice writes, Entrepreneurs and small business owners typically like to go about business endeavors on their own but it never hurts to reach out for help. In many cases, particularly when just starting out, it's wise to take advantage of the services, resources, and expertise of organizations that specialize in assisting entrepreneurs, small businesses, and startups. Two such organizations that Janice writes about in her blog article are SCORE and Small Business Development Centers, SBDCs. Given that one of the immediate considerations of a new business, startup, or entrepreneurial endeavor is startup costs, it's good to know that these two organizations offer assistance for free or at a minimal charge. SCORE provides mentors that share expertise across 62 industries, offering free, confidential business mentoring through local SCORE chapters or via email, plus free business tools on its website and inexpensive or free business workshops both in person and online. For those who prefer face-to-face -face consultations, there are over 320 chapters across the U.S. and its territories which match entrepreneurs with local volunteer mentors. Then there's the Small Business Development Center. It's one of the nation's largest small business assistance programs in the federal government with more than 900 service sites. Its funding is a collaboration of SBA funds, state and local government funds, and private sector resources. Thanks to these collaborative efforts, small businesses and entrepreneurs receive no-cost professional business advising, low-cost training, and other specialized services. The SBDC website lists its services as developing business plans, manufacturing assistance, financial packaging and lending assistance, exporting and importing support, disaster recovery assistance, procurement and contracting aid, market research services, aid to 8A firms, and healthcare information. SBDCs also make an effort to reach minorities in socially and economically disadvantaged groups, veterans, women, and the disabled. Janice notes that both SCORE mentors and SBDC advisors tailor their services to fit the needs of a particular entrepreneur, small business, or startup. After explaining the ins and outs of SCORE and SBDCs, Janice shares each organization's recent achievements. 
In 2015, SCORE reported that its mentors helped start more than 53,000 new businesses, create more than 65,000 jobs, and 72% of its in-business clients increase their revenue. A report from America's SBDCs using data from 2013 to 2014 states that more than 17,000 new businesses were started, more than 98,000 new jobs were created, $7.1 million in new sales were a result of SBDC assistance, and SBDC assistance led businesses to secure $4.58 billion in financing. These numbers are quite impressive, Janice says. As a small business advocate and mentor to entrepreneurs around the world, I understand the struggles entrepreneurs and small business owners experience. Organizations such as SCORE and SBDC really are taking great strides to assist these individuals and help them pursue their dreams. To learn more about Janice Deloach, visit her website at www.janice.media. That is an extremely informative piece of content marketing Janice created, and it's definitely relevant to her audience of entrepreneurs. Thank you for sharing that with us, Jim. To wrap up this month's client news segment, we're going to check in once again with author and founder of Afrofuturism Network, William Jones. His book signing scheduled in January was postponed due to inclement weather, but he was able to make his appearance during the first week of February. William talked about the imagery of Black people in comic books, science fiction, and supernatural film during a book discussion and signing event at Sankofa Video Books and Cafe in Washington, D.C. on February 4th. I am very excited to be making my first appearance at Sakofa Video Books and Cafe. I was disappointed with the postponement of the first event, but this has only heightened my excitement for February 4th, William said prior to the event. In the ex-con, voodoo priest, goddess, and African king, a social, cultural, and political analysis of four Black comic book heroes, Jones delves into the past of four Black comic book characters to break down their origins and analyze their representation throughout comic book history. In turn, his analysis gives the reader a feel for the future of diversity and representation in the comic book medium. Longtime lovers of comic books, sci-fi and the supernatural, established and aspiring creators, and new and casual fans found fresh realizations during William's talk. He also signed copies of his book following the discussion. I am grateful to Sankofa Video Books and Cafe for their support, William said. Sankofa has long been an educational and cultural landmark in Washington, and I am honored that they would host such an event for me. William frequently speaks on the subjects of the history of Black people in America and the image of Black people in various forms of media, pop culture, and hip-hop music on college campuses and at conferences both nationally and abroad. Afrofuturism Network seeks to support the ever-growing community of Black writers, artists, and thinkers in the realms of sci-fi, fantasy, comic books, and film. It analyzes the contributions and portrayal of Black characters in these mediums. Additionally, Afrofuturism Network examines the role and place of Black people in the past, present, and future, and serves as a hub for Black creativity and thought. Learn more about William Jones and Afrofuturism Network at www.afrofuturismnet.com. Thank you for that update, Desiree. William Jones takes content marketing to a whole new level with these appearances. His book itself is one form of content marketing, but his presentations and book signings allow him to connect with his audience and tell his story on a more personal level. For this month's feature segment, we're going to continue with our theme of content marketing as we discuss some of the changes Blue Artist is implementing in regards to social media content marketing. Social media content marketing is an important part of a burgeoning social media marketing strategy because it quickly engages your audience daily, turning your brand into a trusted resource around which an audience may grow. Previously, all Blue Artists Plus memberships included Twitter content marketing to build content and promote your brand on your behalf on a daily basis. Twitter content marketing was controlled by parameters that each client selected and updated as needed. While Twitter content marketing was a great way to build a brand's presence on Twitter, we discovered that it was lacking the personalization that many of our clients desire. To better serve our clients going forward, we're introducing a new social media content marketing solution 
that includes the best of both worlds, daily social media posting coupled with personalized service. Our new social media content marketing service begins with a social media strategy consultation with one of our experienced social media producers. From the information gathered during the consultation, an individualized and professionally produced social media action plan is created. The social media action plan is free for all Blue Artists Plus members. You may remember that Blue Artist producer Pierre Walters discussed the importance of the social media action plan in last month's podcast. Essentially, the social media action plan is designed to provide an easy to understand roadmap and strategy for the development and execution of themes, tools, campaigns, and posts for social media marketing and achieving business and brand growth. Based on the strategy outlined in your personal social media action plan, you can elect to implement the strategy yourself or select from one of our social media solutions, social media content marketing, social media representation, or social media marketing. The benefits of our social media solutions include personalized attention to both your needs and the needs of your audience, curated, targeted content of interest to your audience, content personally selected by your social media producer based on your social media action plan, content posted according to your personalized social media content calendar. Of course, you're always welcome to log into your account and make additional posts of any kind. Our social media content marketing solution, in particular, is meant to build an audience around your brand while quickly expanding your reach through social media. Content is produced weekly, with one fresh headline or relevant article, blog, or news story featured on Twitter daily, Monday through Friday. For even more personalized service, our social media representative and social media marketing solutions offer enhanced daily engagement, including posting to additional social media accounts, creation of custom graphics, community management, and social advertising strategies. Thank you, Jim. I'm excited for the launch of our social media content marketing solution and the personalized attention it gives our clients and their audiences. I encourage our PLUS members to learn more about the content marketing solution and our advanced social media solutions by visiting their DebLab accounts and clicking on Services, then PR and Social. All other listeners are welcome to explore our website at www.blue-artists.com. Now that we've heard some examples of content marketing and learned about Blue Artists' new social media content marketing solution, Let's find out what content marketing is really all about with Blue Artist producer Pierre Walters. Thanks, Desiree. I recently read a terrific article by Matthew Kabunis Loomis at www.buildyourownblog.net called The Difference Between Content Marketing and Copywriting. I want to share it with you today. The Difference Between Content Marketing and Copywriting by Matthew Kabunis Loomis, posted on March 28th. As a new blogger on the scene, you're probably reading a lot about successful blogging tips, right? In your research, you probably have come across these two terms, content marketing and copywriting. What's the difference between content marketing and copywriting? Each term is a form of writing. Both have their place in the blogging world. You can use both of these forms of writing to build an audience and generate income with your blog. But you need to understand how each one works first. I've created a fun little story that helps illustrate the similarities and differences between content marketing and copywriting. A historical tale of two persuasive siblings. Question. Do you have a brother or a sister that looks a lot like you, but yet the two of you are quite different in your personality? As marketers, this is one way to look at copywriting and content marketing. They are related, but different. The two come from a dynamic family tree. They share genes, but not genes. You'll see why in a moment. Think of them as a brother and sister who don't necessarily look alike at first glance, but the more you hang out with them, the more obvious it is that they share the same DNA. Copywriting and content marketing get along quite well together. There's more to love between them than sibling rivalry. As professional marketers, it's important to understand why, so let's look at their family history from the beginning. Meet the parents of content marketing and copywriting. 
Many years ago, a beautiful woman named Publicity met a handsome young fellow named Business. <laughs> Their romance caught fire quickly, and the two fell in love. They got married just a few weeks later. Hey, when you know, you know, right? It was a match made in heaven. Publicity and business have been inseparable ever since. Now, not surprisingly, it wasn't long before the happy couple had their first child. They named him Copywriting. Over the years, as copywriting grew and matured, Mommy Publicity and Daddy Business kept a watchful eye on their child and took note of his many unique traits. They noticed copywriting is gifted in the following areas. Persuasion, creativity, boldness, and enthusiasm. Publicity and business were hands-on parents, engaged, proactive. They took great interest in helping their only son, copywriting, develop and nurture his strongest traits. Some of his traits include advertising, brochures, direct mail letters, press releases, radio and TV scripts, website landing pages. <laughs> their curly-haired boy displayed a curious mind. He pursued many interests and gained lots of knowledge. As he reached adolescence, people also began to notice copywriting's laser focus and dogged determination to master one specific topic, like when he became obsessed with handball in 8th grade, eventually winning a regional championship, or when he read 365 books in one year at age 17. He still has these qualities today. This pleased business and publicity for a long time. The three of them were a happy family. Publicity and business were proud of their baby boy. Copywriting was their golden-haired darling. They were living the dream, but as we all know, life is not always predictable. Change is inevitable. Time for a new dream. An unexpected phone call. One day, Copywriting was in his senior year at the university when the phone rang in his dorm room. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. You have something to tell me? Copywriting's face went pale. He was speechless. Finally, he, he was able to choke out, I'm going to have a baby sister? Yes, a little unexpected surprise came along. <laughs> she was named Content Marketing. Although closer in age to the average set of grandparents, publicity and business embraced their second go-around with parenthood. Yes, they were older, but also wiser. They showered their daughter content marketing with the same doting attention that their son copywriting received. Only now, they had more sophisticated tools to help them, like the internet. Along the way, publicity and business noted, noticed their daughter's own unique set of gifts. Content marketing is generous, confident, smart, friendly. Her middle-aged parents were loving but firm. She received copious amounts of quality time and attention, which helped publicity and business foster and encourage their daughter's own unique traits, including ebooks, white papers, reports, blogs, videos, podcasts. Content marketing has a bright future, still young, she has lots of growing up ahead of her. From a young age, she has been taught the importance of author rank, SEO, being unique, and striving for excellence. She is also blessed to have a big brother like copywriting. He already watches over his little sister as much as he can. Maybe it's the age gap, or the fact that they come from the same set of parents. Whatever the reason, copywriting and content marketing get along swimmingly today. They are extremely close. He's there for her, and she can't help but admire her big brother. Content marketing appreciates copywriting's willingness to help, but she is also her own person. Content marketing is more laid back than her older brother. She enjoys good conversation. She likes getting to know other people. She has her own charisma and draws in a lot of friends pretty easily. This sometimes puzzles copywriting. He prefers getting to the point a little quicker. He's a good leader and more interested in accomplishing goals than making friends, although he does appreciate the importance of a good relationship. But sometimes, copywriting gets impatient with continuous chit-chat. Content marketing hasn't even reached middle school. This fair-haired girl has a lot of growing up to do yet. But... She walks the halls of her school with confidence, knowing that her big brother is just a phone call away, ready to assist 
when needed. We are family. Sometimes, publicity and business sit out on their front porch and marvel at the sunset. While they enjoy the breeze, it is in these moments when their conversation quickly lands on how proud they are to witness copywriting grow in his career and take on higher levels of leadership. Occasionally, content marketing will pull up a chair alongside her mother and father to join in their conversation and watch the sunset. She listens more than she talks. The end. <laughs> Actually, this story is just beginning. Your business can adopt two kids and name them copywriting and content marketing. So, did this unique story help you better understand the differences and similarities between copywriting and content marketing? Are you using one or both of these kids to help your business grow? Okay, technically, copywriting is a legal adult. He can vote. <laughs> Let me know if you need additional help in understanding these two powerful forms of business writing or... If you want, visit the website buildyourownblog.net and leave a comment, good or bad, or anything in between. Wow, that was incredibly informative. Thanks for sharing that feature with us, Pierre. I know it helped me better understand what content marketing is and how it differs from copywriting. If you would like to read the full text of The Difference Between Content Marketing and Copywriting by Matthew Kaboomis Loomis, visit his website at buildyourownblog.net. Thanks, Desiree. By the end of this podcast, our listeners are going to be real pros at content marketing. Let's move on to our producer segment and answer a question about content marketing submitted by a listener. Kevin asks via email, which is better for brand building, long form or short form content? Pierre, what do you say? Thanks, Jim. Kevin's question is really important because it gets to the heart of how best to implement a content marketing strategy. He wants to know which is better, long-form or short-form content. And I gotta say, both are relevant. The question is, to which audience? You see, long-form content marketing, that, when you're looking at building your brand, is more along the lines of a podcast or a full blog article, something that you're, you're asking your listener or your viewer to sit down and pay attention to you for really more than a few minutes, actually probably more than a few seconds, really. Now, alternatively, on social media like Facebook or Twitter, where you might just put a post up and that post might, you know, just be a, a sentence or two, that's short form content. You see, short form is usually in the in the sense of commenting or leaving feedback or providing an opinion on something else on, a, on another long form piece. Maybe if you're on Twitter and you're pushing out articles, interesting articles that your audience might care about, and those articles are coming from different sources, you might put a little color to that and say, hey, check out this fantastic article that I recently read on Forbes.com, or hey, check out this really neat uh, news story on CNN. By posting that, uh, that color in the post to a link, or uh, to a link that goes to a long-form uh, uh, article, that is itself short form content marketing, because what you're doing is you're putting yourself ahead of that particular story. So if someone is following you on Twitter or following you on Facebook, they're getting this information and that color from you. And if that information is relevant to them, they're going to look to you now as a resource because you are providing them with relevant information, things that are of interest to them. Now, something that we have to keep in mind is that what's of interest to your audience doesn't necessarily have to reflect on your brand. For example, if your brand is, uh, let's say, a financial, uh, a financial advisement brand, but your audiences are interested not just in financial advisement, but also in real estate or perhaps in uh, how, uh, how best to start their own business, then there's no reason why you can't uh, provide resources to them in those areas of interest, but then color it so that it comes back to you. For example, I might be a financial advisor, but I might push a story or a, a piece of short form content that says, hey, listen, I recently read this incredible article about how to start your own business. And I know a lot of my clients are budding entrepreneurs. You should check this article out. It's really, really good. Let me know what you think. Now, I'm pushing this out. I know it's not necessarily uh, has anything to do with my actual 
product and service. But what it is doing is it's engage, allowing me to engage with my audience and sort of get ahead of the narrative to become to become a resource uh, th- that they can that they can look forward to in the future. Now, long form content might be something like posting a full blog article on a particular theme or a particular topic that has to do with a product or service that you might be offering. A, a, gr- a good example is our company, Blue Artists. We produce this monthly podcast, Build Your Difference. Now, we've been producing a monthly podcast really for the last three years. And, uh, and it's been really successful. But this year, we're opening up this podcast back to the public as Build Your Difference. It used to be a private uh, devcast. We called it Development Podcast, uh, devcast for short, which was exclusive to our clients. But now we're opening it up. So we, we, we call it the, the monthly Build Your Difference podcast. And we cover all sorts of stories in the podcast. And some of these stories have, really don't have anything to do with specific products that we're offering. But what they do is help to educate and help to inform listeners like you about how you can better build your brand. And that's just another way that we can sort of get in front of the narrative of building a brand. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean every piece of marketing has to has to be about uh, selling a service or selling a product. But if you can associate our company in the same headspace as building a brand, then the, the then the likelihood is that you're going to look to us as a resource and you're going to engage more with us about other areas of brand building. And when there is an opportunity for us to assist you directly through a product or a service that we may, we may have on offer, then you'll be more likely to uh, allow us to service you. So, you know, long form content and short form content are both relevant. It does depend on your audience and it does depend on your platform. If you're if you're primarily focused on social media, you really want to look towards short form content and content that's providing your perspective on on another story or another article or another event or happening. If you're focused on long form, uh, long form content, then that's because you're talking, you're you're posting a blog, you're, you're doing a podcast, you've probably got a TV show, you are engaged in a uh, in a way that is asking your audience to 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 pay attention to you for more than just you know a couple of seconds. And so both are relevant. The trick is understanding your platform and understanding your audience. Maybe also understanding the niche of the piece of content that you're actually sharing. If it's something that is best presented in a short form uh, piece of content, then that's the way you should do it. If it's something that needs that extra elaboration uh, that you can provide through long form, then do it that way. But those are the things that you really need to consider. Now, listen, at the end of the day, you're building a brand. So how you leverage both long form and short form content is important. Now, there are ways that we can help. Uh, We do offer a variety of social media solutions. Actually, we offer three social media solutions and also a social media action plan. If you are in it's just, you know, struggling to kind of figure out what your social media strategy can be to be effective, I invite you to give our social media action plan a try. Let us talk to you over the phone and help you to create an actual plan for your social media strategy. If you're a member uh, of, of uh, Blue Artist, then this service is absolutely free. And it's going to be invaluable because you can use this service to really understand how can I be successful on social media. Now, if you really like the strategy that's developed in the action plan, but you realize that you don't have the time or the energy to actually implement it on a daily basis, then we have solutions. We have a daily social media content marketing solution. Uh, it, I think it runs for about 10 bucks a day. I mean, it's it's probably less than that, less than 10 bucks a day. It's, it's a wonderful solution. Um, we also offer a social media representative service, which allows us to represent you on a single social media platform of your choice uh, every single month, uh, every single day of the week <laughs> uh, of the business week. So uh, that's a great way to allow us to really grow your social media accounts and and market for you. Uh, directly to your audience. 
And if you have a, a huge social media a media presence, you're on Facebook, you're on LinkedIn, you're on Twitter, you're on Pinterest, you're on Instagram, and you want all of that covered, then we've got a fantastic social media management solution. This is a solution really designed to, to be comprehensive for the customer, for the client, for the brand who has a, a huge social media presence, a variety of social media accounts and wants all of them to be managed cohesively with with uh, with the single intent of bringing in customers and uh, and engaging with them and getting them to uh, to patronize <laughs> on your website. So, so social media management is the is the overall solution. But if you want to focus on just a single platform like Facebook or Twitter, you can do the social media representative service. Or if you just want to have a little bit of content marketing produced on your behalf every single day of the week, uh, Monday through Friday for the for the entire month, then you can just uh, take advantage of that social media content marketing service. You know, we're really excited to offer these social media solutions. It's been a long time coming. And I really think that if you have a question about whether or not that might be appropriate for you, or if you could just really just do it yourself, then consider the social media action plan because it's really going to break down a, a strategy that's going to help you see results and allow you to determine whether or not it's something you want to implement directly or whether or not you want to have some assistance. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for that question. It was really just fantastic. And uh, I really appreciate that you uh, wrote us uh, and sent us, a, sent us a question to the Build Your Difference podcast. I look forward to working with you more in person. Thank you for joining us, Pierre. I'm sure your expertise has been invaluable to Kevin and the rest of our audience. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. If you have a question for one of our producers or a suggestion for a podcast theme, we welcome you to submit them to us via email at producers at blue-artists.com. With that, we'll bring our March edition of Build Your Difference to a close. Remember that each podcast is available 24-7 on our website at www.community.blue-artists.com. Our clients are notified when new podcasts are available, but anyone is welcome to listen as we help build your difference. Please join us next month as we continue to offer inspiration and expertise to build distinguished brands that inspire and engage your growing audience. You are building an incredible brand. We're grateful to be your creative agency. Until next time, keep growing, keep striving, and keep building your difference.